that new beat right there will that him i don't recall this beat before shout out imex oh still is it new or old old oh, okay so yeah. you were just digging in the crates uh-huh the computer equivalent of old folders it's a beat though yeah it's great tell you what we just got some news in facebook planning its first smartwatch for next summer two cameras heart rate monitor what you doing facebook oh what you doing mark huh hardware you remember they tried to do a phone at one time mm -hmm. and everybody was like wait a second what and then they bailed on it. But, you know, they've been having all that beef, all that heat with Apple over privacy, this and that. And they may sit there and say, damn, if this stuff keep, keep going on, if uh, Google takes a similar approach and all of a sudden this tracking stuff, the ad business, are we diversified enough? Mm -hmm. Do we need to get our hands back in the hardware game so we have that direct access? To those customers, to those humans, how do we get them? Stop it, Tim. S stop eliminating our customers. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Well, when you got the hardware, Will, then nobody can shut you down. You track all you want. Track all day. Yeah. And you start with a smartwatch, you know, something uh, pretty incognito. Well, ma well, maybe they go with the smartwatch because, like, the phone seems ridiculous at this point. Everybody's got phones. Some people, the market penetration on smartwatches is not the same as phones. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, I got to get one of these other devices. Sure, I'll. But it just, I mean, imagine yourself ordering up the Facebook watch. Like, do you even use Facebook right now? No. So it seems a little bit... <laughs> I don't know if they could have had some other branding. Does it even have to have the Facebook name on it? I don't know. I mean, I guess there's some notoriety to the name. Or maybe some sort of implementation with um, Instagram. Well, they WhatsApp. got Instagram and they got WhatsApp, but it looks like they're going to call it the Facebook. I don't know. The graphic here in the verge seems to imply that it would be the Facebook watch. But in a weird way, you can get this name and the connotation with the name where... Even if the product happened to be good, people are going to already be resistant because of their feelings around a brand name bringing some baggage with it and kind of representing something quite a bit different than hardware. I guess Google did it. I guess Google's done it, but Google's a different company than Facebook. Do you think it might be better if they bought out a company hmm. instead? Hmm. A smart, like a smartwatch company? Interesting. Or a collaboration with a pre-existing watch company. Uh -huh. Maybe. Maybe that's what they end up doing. I mean, this is far out right now. So the speculation here is 2022. A camera on the front watch, on the front of the watch, would exist primarily for video calling. And a 1080p autofocus camera on the back can be used for capturing footage when detached from the stainless steel frame on the wrist. So you pop the whole deal out, William. Now I'm filming. Oh. I'm posting Facebook. I mean, oh. I presume you could post anywhere, but I popped the whole thing off and I got a 1080p video camera. That's menacing. <laughs> well, maybe if I, it if I do it like, like that, if I do it like that. Uh, I don't know. And then you take the video calls right like this, I guess. Uh-huh. Is that what you do? Uh, Not me, but I can see people do it. Really? Would you? <laughs> Take the video call? Sure. On the watch? Sure. Probably not. <laughs> okay. Probably not. Well, that's solved. I mean, maybe in a pinch or something. I don't know. In a, the watch is kind of, is a real supplementary thing. Like, you use it. Um, it's no nowhere near the level of utility in most cases of the phone. It's sure, just like yeah. this extra thing that like, oh, okay, that's novel. Why cameras, though? put cameras on a watch it's like isn't that too much you already have a phone well in facebook's world this thing replaces your phone maybe 
Uh, notice how I put the maybe there. Uh -huh. They're already in discussions with the telcos to have a fully connected and phoneless operation with the SIM card or at least the cellular connection built into it. Wow, that's ambitious. So now you just have now you just got the Facebook watch. You don't even have a phone. You don't need it. Mm -hmm. You're doing video calls. You're scrolling. You're tapping. You're you're right. That is ambitious. Uh -huh. I presume many people will still use it in conjunction with a phone, but Facebook say you can use it without. Now there's not too many smartwatches that are currently marketing that. Obviously, you can get an Apple Watch cellular version. It does exist, but uh, yeah, can Facebook really? Can they do it? Facebook is working with the top wireless carriers in the U.S. to support LTE connectivity in the watch, meaning it would not need to be paired to a phone to work. They will. The watch will come in white, black, and gold, and Facebook hopes to initially sell volume in the low six figures. Uh, that's like in this realm, that's nothing. Low six figures. Uh -huh. That's not a lot of units. So they're not being overly ambitious in that sense. It could be a little fact-finding mission, you know? Yeah. Similar to the way... R&D. Those Snap, the Snap people are coming with the hardware. It seems very experimental. Not like, hey, we're going to uh, compete with the iPhone or something. But instead, it has the feel from the get-go that it's a fact-finding mission in the form of hardware. We're trying to extract mm -hmm. some sort of intel on uh, future products and, uh, and even developments in inside of their software that might be somehow impacted by their findings goofing around with hardware you know right. what i'm saying here will yeah i think that's a better move is kind of just build a hardware that's somewhat beta that's experimental and not launch it like it's going to replace uh an iphone facebook aims to release the first version of the watch in the summer of 2022 Employees have recently discussed pricing of the device at around $400. $400. I mean, it's comparable, right? <sighs> They're having two cameras in there. So. I know. I guess they get cameras, but it is. I mean, you price yourself at the premium level. It's always a tougher pitch. It's like, you know how when Walmart came out with the streaming box recently? It's not in stores yet, but I won't pick it up once it is. I'm going to pick it up. It's, uh, 25 bucks yeah. to start. And you were just like, man, even if you thought the whole thing was goofy and like, what does Walmart have a its own streaming box for? Haven't you heard of uh, Roku and this and that? And But then you saw the price and the value represented and you were like, oh, maybe I should pay attention. Uh -huh. So I feel like if Facebook were to put this device out and it was like $199, then people would be like, huh. Kind of like accepting your position in the market for the time being, embracing that position as a newcomer and coming in a little extra aggressive. But anyway, that's just a rumor at this point. And we haven't seen the hardware. So maybe the hardware is just so shocking and so incredible that you're like, I'll pay $400 right now. Put me on a list. Put me on a pre-order. I hope so. That will be great. Well, you're a big, you're a big uh, Quest guy. The Oculus Quest? Yeah, yes. you're, you're a big Quest guy. Yeah. So you and work. you and Zuckerberg are already. Yeah, we're best friends. You're already. <laughs> he's got his foot in the door. Yeah. You tried to close he's your door. He's got my money. You you went home the other day. You tried to close your door. His foot was in the door. Yeah. He said, "Well, just wait one sec." And you were like, "Oh man, I had a long day. I'm trying to take a nap. I had to do this whole show. Lose yelling and screaming." Yeah. And Mark says, "Uh, just hold on there a second, Will." We got a smartwatch for you. Uh, Two cameras. And, uh, we, and, we, and we see that you're using the Quest over there. We already know a few things about you because of it. Mm. We want to know more. We want to get to know you. Okay. Well, at that point, I'll be terrified. But uh, I'll hear him out. You got to hear him out yeah. at that point. Because remember how neighborly you are. Yeah, with the pizza. <laughs> yeah, you're so neighborly. So, I mean, you got to give Zuckerberg the same sure, treatment. Sure, as long as he brings smoked meats. Just because he's Zuckerberg doesn't mean you don't have to treat him no. in a neighborly fashion in your own neighborhood. R yeah. But I do know who he is, so it's it's okay. You guys have a little barbecue or something. Uh-huh. Talk about... Meat smoking. That's right. <laughs> Today's sponsor is... Manscaped. Yes. 
and a brand new performance package 4.0. There it is. Do we say enough about that Facebook watch, Will? <laughs> yeah, I think we're done. Okay, good. <laughs> I got it right here. The Lawnmower 4.0 part of the performance package 4.0, which also adds the nose hair trimmer. I, I'm needing that stuff. Can you guys send me the Manscaped? Send me the nose hair trimmer. You never send me that one. Uh, as you, as a man getting up there in age, well, you got to take care of the nose hairs. Yeah. Did you already know that? Yeah. I'm I, warning I you. I'm I warning do. you. I'm trimmed up. Okay, good. I'm scaped. You damn, you damn right you are. Oh yeah. Uh, if you want to be on this show right here, you better come in here scaped. Mm -hmm. Far as I'm concerned. No, I'm good. Performance package 4.0. Look at the savings. 45 percent savings. You get the lawnmower 4.0, the weed whacker. That's the ear and nose hair. So you get the ear in there also. You get the crop preserver ball deodorant. You get the crop reviver ball spray toner, and you get the magic mat disposable shaving mat. Awesome. Incredible little package there. I'll tell you a little bit more about the 4.0. They improved it in so many ways compared to the previous version. Put, plus, they put this like, sort of like Lamborghini-esque styling on it. It still has the skin-safe replaceable blade. They got this ceramic component going in there so it's not uh, hurting you. It can be damaged in your sensitive parts with the shaver. Rechargeable, uh, rechargeable battery with wireless charging. Delivering 90 minutes of cordless trimming per charge. That's a lot of trimming, 90 minutes. Huh. I mean, I know you're saying you're scaped, but there's levels to it. LED spotlight and power status indicator. It is waterproof, so you can use it in the shower as well. Really uh, quite the package they put together. They've been having tremendous success, and they just keep improving the product line. And that's what they've done here with the 4.0. So... Actually, uh, they've got a deal here. What is it? Okay, let me make sure I've got it. Make your dad proud this year. Oh, yeah, you got Father's Day, so you can also huh. hook him up as a gift. The brand new new Lawnmower 4.0 and Ultra Smooth Package is the one they're talking about here. Perfect for you and the dad in your life to complete your grooming game. 20% off plus free shipping. So whatever promo I was talking about on the site, you, you're also going to get it, uh, something... Special if you put the right URL, which is manscaped.com slash Lou. So put that and see what deal comes up for you. Uh, you you've also got uh, extra guard lengths, so you can uh, you can pick the the right height, whatever between one and four, setting one and four. Get the right to your liking. Right on. When you're in there doing the trimming, so that's twenty percent off. Plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash Lou. 20% off and free shipping. Manscaped.com slash you slash Lou. Wow. That was deep. Wow. I said slash you. Slash Lou for a better you. Okay. I'm just coming up with these. It's dad bod season and time to get smooth. I don't know if you knew that, Will. Ultra smooth. I didn't know if you knew that, man. Yeah. Did you know it was dad bod season? It's always. I went to the beach season. the other day, and it was some real dad bod season. I'm not talking about myself. I'm not judging anybody else. Yeah. You wear it proudly. No, I mean, I was actually a dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you fit right in. I mean, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, so I was out there, and cold water, hot sun, that's my combination. Okay. Cold water, hot sun. Yeah. You should try it out. I will. Cause, it, because you you got some people they think they gotta have hot water, hot sun. No, that doesn't fare well. Some people think that's what you gotta have. They dip their toe. I mean, I was watching other people. You know, they put their leg in there, and you gotta understand. We're talking Great Lakes. We're talking, what is it? Early June. Uh -huh. So some people they dip their toe and they, woo, they backed up. No, you can't. You gotta go in. Yeah, I didn't back up. Yeah, Wim Hof, hot uh, and cold. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Saying cold water, hot sun. There you go. And the manscape will help you with all that because you can't be out there looking too, too trash. You got to get ultra smooth, as as they say. Uh huh. Manscaped.com slash loop. Or click the link in the description. Get the deal already. Oh, remember the pixel folding pixel thing that we were talking about? Team up with Samsung, uh, the very first first folding pixel with the possibly a new glass product on the front side of it 
big improvement for folding tech that Samsung is supposedly working on and then opening up their display product and enhancements to their folding product, opening that up to other manufacturers. Sure. Starting with Google, which is kind of a surprise because, uh, I don't know, their product, they haven't really been all that early as far as adoption of new hardware technologies, at least recently. Sort of been playing more of a budget role, value role. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this uh, not only is this Pixel Fold supposedly in the works, but it's on track for a 2021 reveal. You know That's what? Soon. You know what? You know what year it is right now? It's uh, yeah. I'm guessing it's. Uh, I mean, it's 2021. But is it going to be a fall reveal? I like that you're guessing it's 2021. <laughs> I'm guessing yeah, it's 2021 sure. right now. Um. Yeah, I know it's been a long couple of years here. It <laughs> feels like a couple of years. It's all a blur. Yeah. This whole mishmash. Mishmash. Mashed potatoes. Yeah. When's the last time you had those? Wow. Well, you need to get on it. I've had a... Uh, it's been a while since you had mashed potatoes? Hashed potatoes. Wait a second. Take it easy <laughs> on this podcast right here. Quite recently. You talking about... Hash potatoes? Yeah. Is that different than a hash brown? Is this a hybrid of mashed potatoes and hash browns? Wait, let me get that right. I think it's like chopped up into cubes. Is that hash? Are you talking about hash browns right now? No, they're not hash browns. Hash browns are like the little... Well, first well they're kind of like mashed together. Hang on a second. <laughs> Here's something you need to know about hash browns. Well. Okay. Hash browns come in many different form factors. Do they? Oh, God, yes. Okay. You see, you can have hash browns in that sort of like string variety over there where they're yes. almost like shredded. That's what I was thinking. You, for hash but you browns. could, you can have hash browns in the little cubes. Yes. That's what I had. Okay. So that's just, just a hash brown. You know, don't you dare call that a hash potato. I thought you were working on some hybrid thing. No, no, no. I thought you had. Somewhere between, I thought you mashed them a little bit. Because you know another one that exists is a smashed potato. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. That's when it's just straight up smashed. <laughs> but That's a smashed potato is not a mashed potato. No, it's not. You see? Yeah. And then and then there's a whipped potato. Take to another level. Oh, right, yeah. Smash, mash, whip. Uh-huh. Hash. So when you put another one in there, hash potato, and you didn't put the brown word in, I thought you created a whole new category. And I was thinking, yeah. I wasn't ready for that. Well, I was figuring, you know, hash potatoes was kind of like a mix between hash browns and regular baked potatoes. That's what I was assuming for some reason. Yeah. So it's, it is like cubed. It's just hash. This was in my mind, but I couldn't uh, express it in words. You know what it is, Will? So I just made it up. It's just hash, mash, and smash. They're all quite close, aren't they? Sure, yeah. But they're completely different in how you make it. But they're all potatoes. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This requires further investigation. Uh. Anyway, about the folding phone, I mean, you took us off track. Yes. Well, that was really... Uh, well, I'm glad we figured it it's out. It's very unfortunate what you did to us there. It's for the people. They've figured it out. Is it or are they upset right now? No, I think this is... They great. needed that little, ha that little hash break. brown departure? Yeah. You know what? You're right. Uh, breath of fresh air. So there's this report says the Pixel Phone late 2021, Samsung be begin production of the folding OLED panels, the new folding OLED panels, this October. And it won't be just Google. As we had talked about previously, Vivo and Xiaomi are also on that list of potential buyers of these new components centered around whatever these new designs are. But uh, it appears Google's foldable already has a code name, Passport. It's kind of a cool name. And Google's been been messing around with their software to maybe prepare Android for folding devices, a wider variety of folding devices. Um, what is their approach going to be? A 7.6-inch panel that folds inward 
Vivo is apparently looking at an 8-inch main screen and a 6.5-inch outer display. So this report is kind of uncovering some details along hmm. uh, as far as a, a couple of different implementations that are on their way. I'm most interested in the Pixel version just because, well, I've, I mean, I've been a Pixel user in the past, and then also it just seems the most unexpected mm -hmm. for, for, like, what is Google's take on this? Yes. And, and for also from a software standpoint, what is the correct software experience? You know, they got some engineers over there thinking about what is the optimal folding software looking like mm -hmm. when I open, when I close, when I twist, when I multitask, when I have multiple windows. I'm very excited. Can't you tell? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to use it. Can't you tell? Apple has listed M1X MacBook Pro in the YouTube tags for the WWDC keynote video. Ooh. Were they supposed to? Was this meant to get leaked? I mean, they didn't even have... This is not an official name. It's not, not been announced. There was no press release. A lot of people wanted to see MacBook Pro content at WWDC. I think you were one of those people. Hmm. Yeah. Not much. Ever so slightly. Well, sure. pe people, people, there's always seems to be, when it comes to a keynote, an event, there seems to be a split. Some people say, it's fine, it's a software-focused event, leave it alone. And then there's another group that, without a piece of hardware, they feel it's hardly worth it to watch the thing. Right. In fact, I saw a headline, it may have been Mac Rumors, may have been 9 to 5 Mac, about users that are upset because they had sold their current MacBook Pro in anticipation of the announcement. Right, Imagine that for a headline. Mm -hmm. So some people, they got like a lot riding on these hardware announcements or lack thereof. But if this is helpful or any kind of indication, you look at all the other tags that were in the metadata for the upload, those are all things that already exist. The odd one out is this tag M1X MacBook Pro and then M1X itself. Mm. So was Apple just capitalizing on the fact that that's what people are calling it and they may be searching for it and they land on the keynote? Or is this indi an indication that these things are closer than they are further away? Mm -hmm. Could be promising. Yeah, I think it's the former. Mm. When people are searching for it, mm. the keynote gets brought up. Mm. Yeah. That's it? I think so. So you think this stuff is far away then? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The inclusion of the tag, while not totally indicative, may suggest that Apple does plan to call the upcoming chip M1X. That's another thing. Would they put it in there if they weren't planning on calling it that? Because at the, at the moment, that's speculation as well. Mm -hmm. Or it is simply using the rumor mill as a way to bump up the new keynote in YouTube search results. It's interesting to think about Apple trying to manage the YouTube search results, like uh, getting in there and being like, get that M1X in there. Yeah, that's what all those people are talking about. Get that tag in there. Mm. This is a funny thought for me. I'm trying to game YouTube like all the rest of us. Yeah. The, the little keywords and tags. Uh, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman has stated that these new MacBook Pros could debut as soon as early this summer. So that's pretty soon. Well, oh, okay. So you're going against Gurman then. I'm going to war with them. <laughs> well, but you suggested that they're for, they're far away. Yeah, these devices. I mean, that was your take. Yeah. Based on your speculation and and your knowledge, which is close to the matter. Yeah, I'm close to Ming Chi, right? Yeah. So it's you and Ming Chi versus German right now. Well, I just figured it's more about the keywords more than no, anything. I hear you, man. But, I uh, hear you. I'm taking you for a ride there. Yeah. Apple will not release its VPN like private relay feature in China. This is. Apple's kind of integrated VPN that they talked about. Mm. Uh, they talked a lot about privacy, obviously, at WWDC. Uh, this one, this feature here will hide your web browsing activities from your internet service provider or anyone else, similar to the behavior of a VPN, but baked right in under the name Private Relay, a suite of features included with a paid iCloud description or subscription. That's the thing they're calling iCloud Plus. I don't know if you remember them talking, but you can put a plus on anything, can't you? 
for sure, yeah. Uh, anyway, if you're in China, don't expect to have that. What you mean you're tell going and know what you're up to? Stop it. Get out of town. You're not going to be able to use that. And mm-hmm. Apple came out themselves and said it. Mm-hmm. The tech giant told, told Reuters that it will be excluding China and a handful of other countries from private relays rollout due to regulatory restrictions. Now, you re- may recall that in order to even do business in China, they ha- Apple had to kind of change some aspects of its operation, moving certain servers to China specifically to house uh, data that normally would leave the country and go to some server somewhere else. So they've already m- made certain compromises, and this is uh, another example of such a thing. It's not China exclusively, though, as mentioned. Other countries that will not receive or be able to use private relay, Belarus, Colombia, Egypt, Kazakhstan, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Turkmenistan, Uganda, and the Philippines. For whatever reason, presumably local governments don't like the idea of not seeing internet traffic. They won't see all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, some of them do. Mm. But if you're a user in some other country, then this is pretty cool. Because you can just toggle this little thing on and you get a VPN like experience and it's native and it's in there. And uh, yeah, cool. If you're cool with sending your traffic to Apple to their server, which is maintained by their company, but they'll strip the IP address from it. Mm. So, privacy, Mm -hmm. big hot topic, privacy. Mm. Makes you wonder, like, what what are people up to online? You know what I mean? That there's so much privacy marketing. Uh huh. It's, it's, it, the, yeah, it, Apple kind of they they jumped the gun on this one. They knew that something was maybe coming up. So, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. There might be like some privacy laws based on people's surfing, maybe now or in the future, that may cause some sort of crazy blunder that i think apple did the right move and enforced privacy you know what i mean go ahead never mind <laughs> <laughs> no i i hear you there's been a lot of talk about it's like pre- a preparation there's been a lot of talk thing. about these types of issues mm-hmm. that have made it to the i don't congress level and and i mean not just in the united states but but in a number of countries mm-hmm. it's a it's a Totally a topic of conversation. Um, But I'm thinking of it more as a marketing thing that you're making it such a public-facing feature. Yeah, that too. Our cameras are great privacy. Like, we have the fastest phone ever that is going to let you take photos and you can play games on it and privacy. Like, Mm -hmm. as a marketing thing, it's relatively recent. And that makes me curious about the end user and how important it is to them. Like where they rank it on the scale of I want to have a fast phone or I want to have a great, you know, and then where does privacy live? And is it continuing to climb that list as more and more of people's lives are happening online instead of in real life? Privacy, safety, it's getting up there for sure. Uh, Ford put out a new truck, a new mini truck called the Maverick. And I didn't even think they needed another truck. They had the Ranger, which was a small truck. This is, I believe it's going to be the cheapest hybrid truck or hybrid vehicle being sold in the U.S. So it's got fuel efficiency in mm-hmm. mind. It's going to do like 40 miles per gallon with the hybrid uh, option. I don't think I don't think all of them are going to be hybrid. And it's affordable as well, which is interesting. So it's this kind of... Uh, a new category i guess the categories existed but it's just getting increased attention now there must be demand for these small utilitarian vehicles we talked about hyundai putting out kind of like a car with a bed i can't remember the name of the model was it san not santa Cruz? what you want to go look for it this thing will be competitive with that uh the maverick 2022 and there's a cool graphic in this article which stacks up the size next to the other pre-existing pickups. Is it this one, the Ionic? No, 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 no. It's, a, it's like a truck. Oh, it's a car truck. Maybe it wasn't Hyundai. Was it... I might have the brand wrong. Oh, no, there we go. Santa Cruz. Oh, I had it. 
So it's like a car pickup. We talked about it on this show. Yeah. Um, it looks like a shark. It looks like a shark. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Very strange look to it. It Very looks surfy. Like, like it has yeah. like a fin or something. You got to go surfing if you have this. Mm-hmm. It's called Santa Cruz. So yeah. that makes sense. Very appropriate. Anyway, Ford's approach to this segment is a little more trucky. It kind of looks like a shrunken F-150, a little more so. Mm-hmm. Um, but the goal here is to make a truck, ve- a truck-like vehicle, which drives more like a car, or at least can this thing can tow, but can <clears throat> fit into parking spots easier. It's a little more narrow, a little easier to drive. Might make more sense in the urban environment and things like this. And then price is the other key characteristic, something that's more affordable than a full-size truck. So this Maverick is starting at like 25,000 US, something like this. Uh, 25,000, eh? I think it might, I think, let me just see. It might even be less than that in the US. Ford Maverick starting price, USA. Um, starting at 22,585. Hmm. That's pretty wild mm-hmm. for any truck, for any vehicle, let alone. Now, once you get up into the higher trim levels, you can get to 30 grand if you pick the hybrid and things like this. But it's a uh, an interesting new segment because who doesn't want the ability to carry stuff around, throw stuff in the bed of a truck? Like everybody, that's a cool thing to be able to do. I've had trucks for a really long time. And once you have one, you find all kinds of uses for it. Mm. But the F-150 and bigger is quite a commitment. You got to have some space for it. You got to uh, get used to driving a bigger vehicle all the time. And something like this, I think, is going to appeal to the crowd that, well, appeal to a whole new crowd. And what do you think, Will? Does it appeal to you at all? Um, yeah, I think it's <clears> cool. <throat> I, I think uh, the price is right. Yeah, actually, I now I'm finding, I'm finding in other articles here that say the base price is 19995 so even under 20 grand U.S. Is it subsidized somehow? I don't think so. I think it's just affordable. Hmm. 40 miles per gallon in the city starting at 19995 USD. Huh. Standard. Oh, so the hybrid is standard. Seats 5 starts at under 20K. It's an interesting... It's vehicles like this that I think that are cool, have are, are really fuel efficient, and have utility, and the modern features. These are the vehicles that are interesting up against EVs. Yeah, they're not groundbreaking. They're, but they're so useful. Yes. Like, if you can get this for 20 grand, and an EV is going to cost you double that, Uh right? Give or take, close to it. And you still don't have quite the flexibility that you have here. Like you see them towing. They got jet skis on a beach over here. And gas stations are still readily available and they got lots of storage and there's no range anxiety in. Uh This is an area of the market which is interesting to me because in the meantime, there's so much news and everything's been about EVs that some of this stuff gets overlooked, I guess. But if you're asking me to recommend a vehicle to somebody and I'm just looking at value, I'm thinking to myself, you know, some something like this, if it's your only car, something like this could be compelling for the right individual. An outdoorsy type. Yeah. For me, I think it could be like a beginning like truck, like for a first time truck. If you want to buy a truck, this could be the one. Are you buying this right now? Did we I mean, have I finally sold you a car? Uh no, I haven't. Eh, thinking about it. Is this the closest we've gotten to talk you out of a model three? Uh sure. Yeah. I it's more about the price. I would say the price is really affordable. The price is incredible. Yeah. You gotta consider the price. Or a truck. Yeah, you got to so, consider the price, man. Yeah. Yeah, sure. You know, I'll, I'll take it. We got Will in the market. All right, now let's transition to Tesla because, of course, I got stuff uh, regarding uh, regarding them. Here we have their new deep crimson color spotted in real life mm. at the Fremont factory. That's a nice color. That deep crimson? No? Oh, it's not for you, Will. Uh, it's like a... No, I, I, I don't... I like it. It's kind of like, like a it. subtle uh, pigment. 
it, it almost looks black, but then you look at it more closely or if it's bright and reflecting, then you, you see the red undertone to it. Yeah, it's very deep. Apparently they had a color similar to this in the early days of the Model S and they're bringing it back. I know they've had issues in the paint shop and we're kind of trying to limit the color so they could nail it better. I can't remember the other one that they removed. They removed silver. Oh. Anyway, so it turns out like painting cars is harder than you think yeah. to do a good job of it. So the new colors are linked to this new paint shop that went into Gigafactory Berlin. Big improvement. I don't know if you know anything about Germany, but there's like the automotive thing is pretty figured oh, out yeah, in Germany. I mean, yeah, yeah. They, there's, a, there's an automotive thing going on in Germany. Yeah, who knew? So you go do Gigafactory Berlin, you set up the paint shop, you hire some of the people and buy some of the equipment locally and you head over to BMW, you head over to Mercedes, you're like, yo, we need some of that paint treatment over here. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. I, uh, I'm i looking forward to it when uh, it hits the sun. Mm. So kind of like maybe like a metallic tint to it. So so here's a word from Elon Musk. Giga Berlin will have the world's most advanced paint shop with more layers of stunning colors that subtly change with curvature. Don't you like that? Doesn't that sound nice. good? I'm selling you a Model S now in deep crimson. Yeah, I'll get this one too. It's my favorite pastime, selling wheel cars. Just uh, window shopping. <laughs> really though, if you were going to get a Model S, which color would you actually get? I uh, probably get black. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, sticking with the Model S for a second, remember we're, we keep updating on what, what is going on with the Plaid model, the new Model S, the yoke steering wheel. It's been delayed. Uh, you probably heard that they're doing a, like a launch day event, an actual in-person event. Well, they got a number of cars lined up in the delivery lot, like hundreds, I guess, at least. It was one of these drone flyover clips. The latest Tesla Fremont flyover video. This is a temporary parking lot. This was June 6, 2021. And you can see the cars in all five colors ready for delivery. Look at that. Does that mean mine is in there somewhere? Probably not. So these are all plaid? Low priority. I don't think they're all plaid, but they're all 2021. Oh, okay. So it's so the it new has the yoke. It's the new model. The new interior is a new computer, the new display. They're there. Why are they not being delivered? What are they waiting for? Yeah, they're ready to go. Uh, Tesla is probably forced to wait for parts or the final software is the guess from inside EVs, as there must be a reason behind the delay for several months. Yeah, they look a little dusty too. Uh, what are they waiting for? Yeah, maybe some sort of mass OTA update. Interesting. Software's not ready yet. Maybe. Um, Tesla is expected to ramp up production and sales to 1,000 a week eventually. But, yeah, there's some sort of delay going on over there. They're all sitting there. How, do you, how does that make you feel? You see all these nice... Wow, a lot of people pick, uh, what was that, a dark silver? Oh, the... Like it's very dark, all of these cars. Yeah, I th you're, ta you're talking about the... It's like a gray. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a charcoal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see a, a lot, lot of charcoals. a lot of charcoal options in there. Very few reds. Very few. There's one white. But who knows? This could have something to do with just the production scheduling around certain colors or something. Oh, I see, yeah. I don't know. I mean we don't know. It's a lot of white interiors as well. Which uh <laughs> this guy just look how dirty that one is. Oh yeah. Yeah, he gets crazy with the this drone. He goes like intimate with them. Like just I goes know. Right in there. Surprise! Somebody doesn't shoot that drone down. Like, is he allowed to be in there? I don't. It's kind of weird. I, I appreciate it. I get to watch the video. <laughs> but like Tesla must imagine it crashes. They're it's obviously like, aware of it. Yeah. Tesla's obviously aware of it, and they must be okay with it, I guess. But yeah, you're right. He's like right on top of these cars. Good pilot, though. Yeah. Good pilot, though. Yeah. Uh, sticking with EVs for a second, we got new footage of the Aptera Soul, solar-powered electric vehicle with 1,000-mile range. I, I mean, we didn't know if this thing was going to happen. You saw at CES, I think there were clips, or no, they were driving one or, or around. 
this is wild, like super lightweight three wheel vehicle. Elon said he never do anything like this. I wouldn't want to see the thing in a crash test, mm. but I mean, that's a big, but, but if you just push that to the side for a moment, if you go super lightweight with it and it, it's sort of like somewhere between a car and a bike and you cover it in solar panels, you get these tremendous numbers in there. You make it super lightweight. I mean, can you even imagine a thousand miles and you're getting a significant charge off the solar? That's, I mean, just from a technical perspective. Uh, sure, yeah. No? I mean, that's a dream. I mean, it looks like it's from the Jetsons. It looks super futuristic. It's got the big display. So you're not lacking on the inside. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little scared on the freeway. I'll give you yeah. that. But like look, she, picture. she got the surfboard, which you were calling for. Uh-huh. She got the Yeti cooler in there. That's a high-end cooler. Like stuff stay your ice will stay in there for days at a time. Uh-huh. So she's prepared to go to the beach and takes it to the beach. Doesn't worry about rain. She got a thousand miles. She's having a party. Doesn't worry about rain. She says, I'm gonna go. And look, she looks over here at her display and she goes, I'm not even done with this day. I'm about to travel to the next beach. Is what happens in the clip. Uh. And she's flying on the freeway and you're like, Oh, I'm gonna go explore the next beach. Oh no, let's go to the next beach. <laughs> oh, okay. It's three beaches in one day, and then they pop the tent at the back. Oh, cool. And now you're interested, Will. Did I just sell you a nine car? Yeah, I want this one. No, you can't have that one. No. This one's not ready to go. I know you talked to the company. I would love to see it in the studio. That would be incredible to see this thing. Yeah. There's, uh -huh. a, there's a base model that's not going to do 1,000 miles. By the way, for those in, those in uh, metric, 1,600 uh, 1, kilometers arranged get out of town i mean some wild wild stuff and then as far as pricing goes starting at twenty five thousand nine hundred for the 250 mile version and the thousand mile version is forty four thousand nine hundred. so it's kind of expensive for what it is uh -huh. but man that's you pull that you take that thing on the road i'm not sure you can turn more heads than that if you were driving that Everybody's got to ask you what that's about, that which could be a problem as well. Uh huh. Yeah, you got to talk to everyone. But if they can pull it off, wow, this is amazing. It's it's very cool. But do you feel like you have to see the crash test before you feel confident? Yes, absolutely. And it looks so lightweight that thing. Well, maybe around town though. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Know. I'm just I'm a sucker for futuristic things. Yeah, you know. And if they were all like this, I mean, it wouldn't be so bad to see them all on the highway. You would feel comfortable driving one, right? Until you saw the 18-wheeler. Yeah, oh. no 18-wheelers. Just uh, <laughs> all of these. All right, you thought that was crazy. This next one might be crazier. Here is the $1,700 Alibaba electric Jeep. Just order one of those up. Oh. For $1,700. I didn't even know you could buy this type of thing. What on is this? This is a plexiglass or <laughs> so this the? is you can there's like a market for these mini electric vehicles and you head on to Alibaba and you can buy one of these. It comes as a kit and then you build it. Oh. Hey, so that's cool. <laughs> Turn it around. It's just the windshield that got me. No, it's no. Like, I mean it's yeah, it's I mean it's one thousand seven hundred dollars, right? Yeah. So this is cool. It's a little kit. It's kind of like an upgraded Power Wheels. You uh, you get all the parts. Uh. Keep in mind, uh, I was I'm reading through the article here on Electrek. The there's tariffs and duties and stuff like that. So uh. the actual price ended up more like three grand. Oh, dude, we should get one of these. Build it. Like to right. drive around in here. Yeah, it's uh. all electric, right? Yep. And uh, it looks cool. It's kind of like a Jeep. The it's an whole, it's based uh, on a U.S. Army Jeep. Yeah. 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 Okay, I uh, did sell you a car today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy this. It's not the one I expected. No, I don't, this is, I don't, this is not like street legal or anything. Yeah. You I know what you. I mean? There's no airbags or seat belts or anything. And it's smaller than you think it is, by the way. Because you're looking at is it right it, now. Uh, is it like a golf cart size? Uh, there's a video. Go to the video. Oh, it's actually okay. kind of funny. He's the dude's going off road and everything, uh, right there. 
<laughs> this is not what I expected. This no, is it, literally a power wheels. But but faster okay. and more capable than that. Look at him go. I mean, that's a rugged terrain. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why you don't just get an ATV at this point, but there's something... This thing looks a little uh, more special, I guess, because obviously everyone's seen ATVs before. Yeah. But look at him. He's out on the job site. It's like a, a lawnmower. Going over the rubble. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's still cool that you get to build an electric vehicle. Yeah, actually, if you if you keep scrolling a little bit lower, you can see uh, the individual here go by the name of Kyle on this article. He has some pictures of the step-by-step -step process building it. You can see him uh, picking up the different elements. It fits into a relatively small package, which fit into the bed of his pickup truck. Uh. And then he just had to put it together. And his was shipped to Los Angeles, by the way. You got to pick a port to send it to. So getting it is not all that easy. But if you do, you have a pretty fun cool little little thing seems like it could tow stuff too it goes it like a little wench it had it goes 25 miles per hour what'd you call that thing on the front is it a wench or a winch <laughs> <laughs> i was rethinking that too i was like well the winch do you uh, uh can you what do, what do you know what a wench is isn't it no, no, it's a winch. A but, winch, yeah. But do you know what a wench is? Uh, no. I don't know. Somebody else can look it up. You know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mo's laughing down there. <laughs> never fail, Will. You never fail. You just keep hitting home runs. Sure. <laughs> Satisfying the crowd. Anyway, yeah. So apparently we're ordering that one. Uh... What do we got next? Oh, how about this? Uh, the Star Wars plane. United Airlines has a Star Wars plane. Oh. And, well, it's kind of like a regular plane, but it's cool because you get certain extra swag if you fly on this plane. If you happen to fly on this plane. Okay. Star Wars branded stuff. Now, there's like a cool paint job on the outside. I didn't even know these type of collaborations existed. It's a 737 800 which is uh, flying currently in the United States, some trips to Canada as well. So who knows if we, we ever, when we start traveling again, you may find yourself on this United flight. You can actually track it and try to arrange your trip around it maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, this individual documented his experience on this particular plane. He's on his way to Puerto Rico, actually. It was painted to celebrate the release of The Rise of Skywalker. And it has a first order theme on one side. And on the other side, it has a resistance theme. Huh. And there's like a plaque. As you keep scrolling, you'll see some of the pictures. Now, on the interior, it's not really all that special. Just the headrest is Star Wars specific. So that's not a huge difference. But you get this little package so that all your in-flight stuff is Star Wars Specific, so there's like a Star Wars pen, you get some Star Wars socks, Star Wars sleep mask. Huh. Are you happy about any of this? It's fun. Why not? I just know if my kids found themselves, if we were like traveling on a flight and then it was like, oh, we got the Star Wars plane? Yeah. It would be a fun moment. Uh-huh. Out of all the planes, it's nice that there's only one and then you can track it and go on it and it's special. So actually... United isn't the only one that did a Star Wars collaboration. There's an airline in Japan called ANA, and they did three different Star Wars jets. And one of them was that R2-D2 design. Oh, right. Yeah, we saw this one. Which is pretty cool. And they had a C-3PO design, as you can see there. Which is your favorite look? Out of these two? Uh, I think there's, well, if you include oh, the yeah. uh, United one, so there's three. You got R two D two C three PO, and then theirs is like a generic Star Wars with some jet with some fighters on it. Uh, I'll go with the C three PO. That's a cool looking jet. I was gonna say the uh -huh. exact same. The way the wings are white, and then in the center is gold. Yeah, and that robot's underappreciated. Oh, you're a big you know? C three PO guy. Yeah, I think he's cool. Nice. 
Um, oh, Bitcoin news. El Salvador makes Bitcoin legal tender. Bitcoin was up today mm. after this news. Um, what can I say? I, it seemed like a matter of time before some country was going to make a move like this and fully embrace Bitcoin. One thing to mention, oh, well, first of all, 62 out of 84 possible votes, lawmakers voted in favor of the move to create a, a law to adopt Bitcoin. Despite concern about the potential impact on El Salvador's program with the International Monetary Fund. Uh, here's a quote from who? Is it the president? Yes, the, from the president of the country. It will bring financial inclusion, investment, tourism, innovation, and economic development for our country. This was in a tweet, actually, prior to the vote. Now... Here is the important component and maybe the reason why El Salvador has made this move. Um, money flows into El Salvador from elsewhere. This is like when people will leave and then send money back to their relatives type of thing. This is a big deal in El Salvador. It, it represents a, like one-fifth of their uh, GDP. El Salvador relies heavily on money sent back from workers abroad. World Bank data showed remittances to the country made up nearly $6 billion or one-fifth of the GDP. This is one of the highest ratios in the world. Hmm. So if your GDP relies so heavily on remittance, then getting money back into the country easily could be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Now, currently, you have all these variety of methods of doing that some of them are expensive some of them um could be unsafe i guess or slow old-fashioned procedures mm -hmm. so you embrace bitcoin you regulate it to some extent and maybe you get even more money flowing back because it's just easier mm -hmm. so i'm thinking that that probably contributes to a certain extent uh to this adoption this official adoption of the thing the cryptocurrency offers, in theory, a quick and cheap way to send money across borders without relying on remittance firms typically used for such transactions. Uh, apparently, 70% of people in El Salvador lack access to traditional financial services. Hmm. So this is the thing that crypto people have been saying forever, right? Is that, hey, it's not necessarily what's happening domestically, but it's like there's all these unbanked people in the world. That whole Bitcoin, I mean, how many times was the word unbanked said during Bitcoin 2021 in Miami? Mm -hmm. It's a huge proportion of the world's population that has no banking. And crypto can fix that or at least change that fairly rapidly Yes, because of access. Uh -huh. And uh, like Essentially, you're your own bank. Yeah. yeah. But also for transactions for sending and receiving without a bank that's happening in all kinds of weird ways around the world like people transacting in phone cards in parts of africa and you can right. you can people will figure out other ways because you can't do everything locally you can't do everything hand to hand with cash let's say or if you if there's a volatile currency in the country that you're in tons of fluctuation you're not happy about that uh However, it is important to note that crypto is still relatively volatile itself, as yes. we've seen recently. And that's where the whole stablecoin comes in concept. And, of course, all, a lot of that on Ethereum where – and some crypto people don't like this because they're like, well, you're just pinning to the, to the, to the fiat US currency. Yeah, like but that. you can imagine if you're in a market – like I remember traveling as a youngster going to places like Cuba and using USD, having – the staff at the different resorts asking for USD uh -huh. or even Mexico that happens. You know, I haven't traveled in a long time, but it's stability makes it desirable. You sure. know what you're getting. And it's just, it's still been one of the issues. Stability has still been one of the issues as far as crypto taking that next leap and becoming the de facto transaction method. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously... We'll see how the whole thing maps out. But this is, I mean, it's got to be good news for Bitcoin. This right here. Uh -huh. I'm curious to see uh, how many people use Bitcoin um, here uh, for like a year or two. And see how it goes. You're talking about in El Salvador? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking about travel, Canada is set to ease quarantine rules for vaccinated travelers. This is hugely 
important news for us. Well, I was supposed to go to Detroit to look at the new Lightning uh-huh. truck, and I'm like, what do I have to do to get back in? And previously, it was a 14-day quarantine if you leave and come back for any reason. So I'm like in a hotel or something for 14 days. Yeah. Maybe I could be at home. or You need to give a plan, and uh-huh. it just... Anyway, it's, it worked out because they're going to have the lightning truck over here in the studio, which is even, awesome. even cooler, uh, coming up next week. So definitely peek around the Unbox Therapy channel for that one. Can't wait to check that out. Like I said, I as a truck person, as an F-150 customer, this is very interesting this to is me. Personal. This is personal. It got personal. I hear you. Anyway, it's still good to have the the some sort of travel thing take place because people got to move on. There's um, well, all kinds of reasons, man. There's all kinds of businesses that have been affected, all kinds of people and families that haven't been able to see one another and things like this. There needs to be a plan mm-hmm. going forward. And so the these border rules that exist right now date all the way back to March of last year. Good Lord. Anyway, the word is now that things can open up, could, may open up fairly soon, maybe as soon as like June 20th, or maybe even before that. Look at this. The plan is expected to be announced within days, though the timing could shift according to people. These are people with information on the matter. It isn't clear when the changes would be implemented or whether Canada would open up its borders to non-U.S. travelers at the same time. But this would be travelers, I guess, Canadians, vaccinated Canadians leaving and coming back. Right. Uh, you got to have the two vaccine doses, though. I'm only on a single right now. Right. Got to get doubled up. And then I can go do, because there was another one. What was Kirk telling me? Uh, Rivian, with the Rivian truck. They were like, yeah, you got to come over here. Uh-huh. You can't, you can't go anywhere right now. Get your second dose. I'm in Canada. I can't come. I can't go there right now. Not easily. But anyway, this is a... Yeah, there, there's movement here. There's a plan. There's movement. There's a protocol. But it does get sensitive because people are like, what do you mean vaccinated only? What are, Vaccine passports. What does it all mean? Uh, future children of men. Uh, death. Destruction. Apocalypse. Uh, this is the first sign. You know what I mean? The right. vaccine passport is the beginning of the end. You've, I'm sure you've seen all this. Yeah. But that escalated very quickly. Oh, you mean the way that I presented it? Yeah. Well, I've been watching that show on Netflix, so. Okay. So, uh, sweet, sweet tooth. Sweet. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> it's like an actual uh, sickness, and right. I'm not, there's no spoil. I'm not spoiling anything, but it's an actual sickness. It's in the trailer. Yeah. And it's mapping accordingly to some of the stuff people are, that has gone on the past year, which makes me wonder, like when did they when were they producing the show or was that storyline I mean I should know the answers to these things but I do not but either way enjoy I'll be I think I'm on I'm almost done this thing actually oh, I think okay. I, maybe I'm like four episodes or something all right so I'll let you know will yeah if you recommend it or not I might have to dress up in a costume for the watch party like you do if I really get into it, like this little boy here. If I really get into it, like the ga- like you were with the Game of Thrones outfits, sure. Then, then you might see me like this on the next episode. Right. It's probably not gonna happen. Oh, okay. But anyway, yes, travel coming soon. Canadians, rejoice! There's a plan. Speaking of travel, how about space travel? On the last episode, we talked about Bezos trying to get himself up there, Blue Origin style. He had the Instagram clip. You know what, brother? I'm gonna take you. Uh, he said, "Like literally, his brother." He said, "Oh yeah, not like, not like Hulk Hogan, brother. <laughs> no, brother. No, he said to his brother, I'd like to have my brother there. I think it'll be meaningful." And they filmed it. It was very uh, dramatic. Produced. And then they hugged. Yeah. And it was both had cowboy hats. So, yeah, pretty cool. Space cowboys. Was that a movie or something? Yes. Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure. No, you don't have to double check it. Let's just go with it. Okay. If it wasn't a movie, it should be a movie with a name like that. Anyway, Richard Branson is another one in this space race. We got a billionaire space race going on. Uh-huh. It ain't Russia and the United States. It's Branson versus Bezos. B versus B. 
And so he's been going with Virgin Galactic. They both want to do the space tourism thing. And I guess, and rightfully so, the thinking here is that the first one to get there is going to get all kinds of press. Yes. So now, apparently, there's a race on, and Branson is targeting July 4th, the July 4th holiday weekend. They're going to have a space off? It's a space off. I like that, Will. A space off between the space cowboys. So... B versus B. This launches before uh, Bezos? Yeah, Bezos was July 20th. Uh. Bezos was July 20th. But uh, but I don't know. If they move up, does he move up? Like, it's not exactly a thing you want to do nearly willy, though, because... Yes, yeah. You are going to space. Uh-huh. There, there is uh, some risk involved, I presume. Not Probably not very much, as we were saying earlier. There's got to be a lot of testing and all that, but... You don't want to rush it. I'll make sure you're ready to go. Virgin Galactic is awaiting approval from, of the flight from the Federal Aviation Administration. However, it is unclear if the VSS Unity, that's the Virgin Galactic vehicle. Look at that. Space plane. That's cool. It's unclear if it's actually capable of the internationally agreed upon edge of space. The Kármán line at 62 miles. It's unclear. People don't know how, if it can actually do it. I, cool. Obviously, that's the target. But I don't know why they're saying it's unclear over here on futurism.com. Uh, the space plane has flown above half of that altitude three times so far. So it's this critical line where it's like, okay, yeah, you're in space. Hmm. So it's a race and it's a distance thing. you got to get to a particular line and who's going to get there first? Who are you betting on right now, Will? You have to answer this question. Who's going to do it first to that line? Is it Bezos or is it Branson? Well, it seems like Branson, right? July 4th. You think he's going to pull it off? Mm. You're yeah. going Branson. I'll take Bezos. Okay. We'll see how it goes. McDonald's absolutely crushed the planet with their uh, BTS meal. Okay. Would you expect anything, anything yeah, else? Yeah, I'm not surprised. You're not surprised. I'm not surprised. This is the biggest performance bump in weekly demand. Huge bump. Who doesn't want a bump if they're in business? The highly anticipated BTS meal launched in the United States May 26th, but the important part here, it launched globally as well. The previous collabs were more regional. Uh-huh. According to Business Insider, McDonald's has seen a significant spike in a number of customers visiting its locations. Restaurant vis visits were up 12%. That's not nothing, Will. For one little McNugget meal? I mean... They, they do have the nice packaging. They have the branding. They got the great packaging. You got to get in there for that. But it, it also showcases the power of that BTS brand that they could bump all of McDonald's 12 points. Because all those fans had to get in there. But it is also important to note, it wasn't just nuggets. I know a lot of people said that, but you couldn't get those sauces before. The Korean sauces uh -huh. for the dips. And I told you, I found the Cajun dip to be quite complex. Yeah. I had it again. It was actually pretty good, the Cajun. Because you, were, you, you weren't into the Cajun. I no. showed you the Cajun. You were like, not for me. And I was like, easy. Yeah. I just slapped it out of your hand. Yeah, but you were in a bad mood at that moment. You were a little off. So well, my nose was plugged. I couldn't uh, deal with all the flavors. So what happened? I wasn't in Flavor Town. So what happened on your follow up that what was different? You were in a better I could, mood. I could have, yeah. And uh, I could breathe. Right. Uh, taste. And so what did you discover on the second run at the Cajun? Uh, Cajun had a nice, uh, complex flavor. You agree with my, you agree with the word yeah. yes for McDonald's. Yeah, you're like, oh damn, there's some like mustardy thing going on there's there. There's something in there that is a, it's a little more than you than you bargained for. Uh huh. And you don't end up minding it anyway. So BTS huge popular. Um, when they did the quarter pounder deal with. Travis Scott, the weekly traffic went up 9%. But That's not nothing either. 
I guess it's only for the U.S. That right? was just for the U.S. Yeah. though. Yeah, but you're right. It's not nothing. I say you got to pay that man a few dollars after that. Yeah. You got to pay these guys a few dollars. These guys. Uh, this one will soon be available in 50 countries on six continents. Worldwide BTS meal. Congrats. Holy cow. Anyway, so after doubling up and trying the Cajun again, do you take it over the sweet chili as far as the two Korean sauces go? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Because the, the sweet chili is too much like the other ones. Yeah. I find it very flat. It's too much like the other ones. It's yeah. too safe. I don't know if you saw. This is number one on trending right now. Number one. Is it? Battlefield 2042 official reveal trailer. I'm going to refresh my page here because I'm sure the view count is even higher. Almost 5 million views premiered five hours ago. Uh, People care about this. Battlefield yeah. 2042. Didn't you have some good times in Battlefield? Maybe. Oh. Uh, what was the, the one with the blue cover? It was blue and red. Was it two? I don't know. I was playing the game a little okay. bit. I played the game a little bit here and there, but uh, this one, an extensive review trailer, five minutes long, and how about these graphics over your game engine footage? Yeah. Are you ready for that? This is game engine? That's what it said. <laughs> okay. You're not ready for that, Will. No, I'm definitely not. This is very exciting. Yeah, the... The in inside of this uh this is in game trailer. That's what hey man, I'm they oh. said it. They said it. I didn't say it. They said in game engine. Well. But uh they impressive. there's all kinds of radical moments in here. Vehicles and there's a you got a quad that hit, jumps into a helicopter off of a skyscraper at one point. I mean, it is just action packed this five minutes of all the different environments and I mean, at this point, the biggest trouble is the fact that people can't get these GPUs. <laughs> yeah, that's the main problem. No and one can these consoles. Or the consoles. Like, who's going to be able to enjoy this thing? This was like a really iconic moment in Battlefield. Jumping out the jet? Yeah. Yeah, this one, This was a bit ridiculous. Shooting with the bazooka. I'll and say then this moment here into his jet. is a bit ridiculous, but it's fun, whatever. It's a video game. Yeah, he jumps out. When I saw this, I was like, come on now. But this actually happened in the, the previous Battlefield games. That's why I made it here. I, I, it I, was like a highlight of like all Battlefield games. So you're <laughs> saying it's a possible thing to pull off in the game? Yes. Yeah. It, no, it happened. Yeah. I hear you, man. I hear you. And it was I just a it. really I think I was sort of like maneuver. watching this trailer. The graphics are so good that I was almost watching it like a movie trailer. Yeah. It almost feels like that. And then that's why my brain went to the place of, okay, all right. Like almost like when you're watching a Fast and Furious uh, 9 trailer. Yes. And the car goes off and then the helicopter grabs the car. It's just so outlandish. You kind of got to take a nap after. Yeah, that's what you were telling me. Uh-huh. Oh, there's a tornado <laughs> in the middle of this war in the middle of a city. It's just max action. Just it's, just uh, like, can we, can you add a little more action? They're like, yeah, no problem. Uh -huh. Like there's like a dinosaur could show up right now. Uh -huh. And then they'd have everything. Storm, war, squirrel suit, dinosaur, tornado. Uh -huh. I mean, this is exciting. This is kind of refreshing from, uh, I guess, COD. I was dominating for like a decade. Hmm. What do you think about 2042? Sh sure. You like a little bit the, of a futuristic future thing tech, to it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know. Go check it out for yourself. It is action-packed. If you like video games, I mean, you're obviously paying attention to this. Five million views in five hours, number one on trending. I don't need to tell you. Yeah. But the graphics are looking great. And Battlefield has always been one of those benchmark type games. Yes. Where it's like, the state of gaming uh -huh. is if you want to figure out what the state of gaming is, you, like top spec battlefield experience is a good indicator of where things are at. Yeah. Destructible environments like the physics, 128 players. Oh yeah. We almost forgot 128 uh -huh. multi uh, player multiplayer. Yeah. So 
I'm excited to give this a try. I, it gives me a title to try out when I have one of these gaming related videos and I get my like small fragment of time to play a game. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to buy this for that purpose. Exactly. Yeah. So that I can, if I have to boot something up, I can boot this one up. And yeah. I don't know because the last time when I was playing the COD, uh, what is the latest uh, Black Ops Cold War? Sure. Is that what it's called? Yeah, sure. Whatever. Anyway, I was goofing on that and you saw me and I'm like, man, this thing is addictive. I'm just flying. I'm just it's pure caffeine fueled RGB excitement. Yeah. Uh, maybe this take things to another level. I don't know. Yeah. Battlefield 2042. Uh, this was also on trending and you know, I got to give you an update whenever uh, there's a new trending short mm. because you're a big short guy. You're Mr. TikTok is what you like to call yourself. So I got to always uh, um, bring this up in case you missed it because you need to know about all these because you don't miss a single short, big uh. short guy. Um, so this is number seven on trending, 20 million views. Okay. Almost 21 million views. Uh. Uploaded June 8th. June 8th. That was yesterday. Uploaded yesterday! Twenty-one million views uploaded. When will? Yesterday. Yesterday. Well, it's got to be something insanely special. Twenty-one million views uh. since yesterday. It's called Monster versus Dad. Let's play a little bit of it. Maybe without the music. We don't need the music. Okay, here we go. More views than. Battlefield trailer. More views than anything else uploaded in that amount of time. Is he wearing like a sting outfit? Sting mask? Oh. 21 million views. Wow. Break it down for me, Will. You're Mr. TikTok. You're Mr. Short. You're the big short. Uh, yeah, this kind of stuff is, is, uh, disheartening as a content creator. <laughs> like, how, why? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> I mean, good for him. You know, there's no hate in this. It's just, for me, it's confusing. <sighs> How many views is it? How many views? 20 mil. Yesterday. So it's 20 million. It was uploaded yesterday. Well, you know, obviously there's something in there that we're not seeing. Obviously this is magic. Clearly, yeah. Clear, clearly this is... Um, we don't get it, you know? We're out of touch, Will. This is a masterpiece. I, I think we are. Yeah, we're out of touch. Yeah. Like I've said in the past, it's our fault. It's a masterpiece. Uh -huh. I mean, what is this a hundred million views in, in like a week? Uh, I mean, it's up there. Is it going up or is it going down? Can you explain to me what we watched? Uh, well, there was a guy who's dressed as a monster arm wrestling uh, his dad and then forces him to work out his dad and then he his dad comes out stronger with more muscles and buns so that's uh, that's pretty much it have a good day